So let's maybe go through one detailed example and then this algorithm will be made more clear. So let me just start by cleaning out the slide. Let's now take the same case over here, right? So 1000 times 1001. So the multiplicand is 100 and the multiplier is 1001. Okay, and then there's a bunch of zeros over here. Okay, so let's go through the very first step. So in the very first step, the product is, of course, all zeros. So in the very first step, the input over here is a bunch of zeros. Input over here is the number 1000. When I add them up, it produces a result 1000. Now the question is, do I write this into this product register or not? And I determine that by looking at the least significant bit here. This is a 1, which means I do intend to write this value in. Right, so as a result of that addition, what shows up here is a bunch of zeros preceding it, and then the number one one zero zero zero. Okay, now let's move on to the next step, and I'll change colors before I do that. Okay, so in the next step, this first gets shifted to the left, right? So it becomes one followed by four zeros. Okay, and so that shows up here as the input what shows up here is this value coming back here so it becomes one zero 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 all right meanwhile this has also shifted to the right so it becomes one zero zero okay so let's first do this addition of these two numbers that gives me the sum one one followed by three zeros and now the question is do i increment this product register with this new sum over here that is determined by looking at this least significant bit. It's a zero, which means that this sum that I've just computed can essentially be ignored. And so the product register stays at its value of one followed by three zeros, right? So what happened there is I basically realized that I should be adding zero to whatever is in the product register, right? So I did this math, but then I said, well, you know, I really need to add a zero. So I'm just ignoring that sum. And so the product register remains at that value over there. Now let's move on to the next step. Change colors again. So now this is shifted to the left. So it is one followed by five zeros. That's what shows up here. And then this value shows up again over here. So I'm going to be adding that to one followed by three zeros. The resulting sum is one zero one followed by three zeros. Meanwhile, this has shifted to the right, so it is now 1, 0. And since this bit is 0, the sum that I just calculated is going to be ignored. So the product register remains at 1 followed by 3 zeros. Now let's move on to the next step. And this has now shifted one more place to the left. So 1 followed by 6 zeros. And that's what shows up here. And then this sum again comes back here. Again, I'm going to be adding one followed by three zeros. The resulting sum is, do I keep this or do I ignore it? Well, in the meantime, this has shifted one place to the right. So it's, it's just got the number one. And so this tells me that I should not be ignoring this most recent sum and I should be writing into the register. So the register at the end has this value. Right, and going back over here, you see that this value is exactly what you had computed. So hopefully that example explains how the multiplicand keeps getting shifted to the left and then gets added to whatever is already in the product register. And depending on the corresponding least significant bit in the multiplier, which is constantly shifting to the right, you either update that product register or you do not. So now let me just show you how that implementation is made a little bit more efficient, right? So over here, I kind of kept things relatively simple, mainly to explain how these steps are done, right? So the product register was a 64-bit register. I had a 64-bit ALU here, and I had a 64-bit multiplicand, and then I had a separate register for the multiplier. Now, it turns out that a large fraction of this hardware can actually be simplified. So that simplified hardware is what I'm showing you over here. Okay, you will see that the 64-bit ALU has become a 32-bit ALU. 
I have the multiplicand, which is just the 32-bit value sitting right there. There's no room to shift it left or right. And the product register still remains 64 bits, but it is used to accommodate both the product as well as the multiplier, right? That multiplier register, which was sitting here, has now kind of disappeared. So how does this work, right? So you'll notice that, you know, in these steps, as I was making changes, you'll see that the last few bits kind of don't change in the last few steps. So this is because, you know, one of the inputs here is the product register, and that is being added to the multiplicand, shifted to the left. That means the last few bits are bound to be a bunch of zeros. So when you add a bunch of zeros over here to the least significant bits of the product register, obviously those last few bits are going to be unchanged. Okay, so essentially with every additional step, we know that one more least significant bit is going to be unaffected by the next few steps. Okay, and so that's the reason why the product register starts out as being this 32-bit value over here. And with each step, instead of shifting the multiplicand to the left, we leave the multiplicand as it is, but we say that the last bit of the product register is not going to be affected in the next step. So let's shift this to the right. So as you figure out the last few bits of the product register, you just kind of keep shifting it to the right and don't involve it in future additions, right? So the only interesting part of the addition is the multiplicand being added to some of the more significant bits of this product register, right? So the 32-bit multiplicand gets added to the 32 most significant bits of my running sum and that addition is being performed on this 32-bit ALU. Okay, so in my very first step, I have a product register which is 32 bits. Okay, so it's a 32-bit product register. And at that point, I also have a 32-bit multiplier. In the next step, the product register has grown to a 33-bit value. Okay, and 32, the the 32 most significant bits are kept here and the 33rd least significant bit has moved into this position over here. Okay, but thankfully the multiplier which is which is occupying the space has also been shifted to the right. So I only have a 31-bit multiplier at that point. Right, and with the next step I have a 34-bit product and a 30-bit multiplier and that keeps on going until I finally have a 64-bit product and the multiplier has been completely shifted out. So thankfully, in every single step, the sum of the bits in the product register and the number of bits remaining in the multiplier equals 64, right? So I just need one 64-bit register to keep track of both the product value and the multiplier value. And that's why the multiplier, you know, which had a separate storage over here, has now disappeared. Okay, so this is how you make the hardware more efficient.